Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bad ahbati fillah a question was asked assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I have the, imen- uh, the intention to seek knowledge and to sit under the feet of the scholars to learn my religion, inshallah. The problem is that my iman unfortunately became weak. I have repeatedly committed the old sins of my jahiliyyah. I do not understand what's going on with me right now. I was not like that before. Allah is my witness that I try to stay away from all sins. I'm worried now that I will be prevented from the Islamic knowledge because of my sins and that I cannot go this way anymore. I notice it too. I want to seek knowledge or learn the Quran, but somehow it does not work. Could you give me some advice? So first and foremost, my advice is probably not like, uh, not unlike the advice that the scholars in general uh, uh, give with regards to the issue of weak iman, that you need to do those things. You need to remove yourself from negative environments, environments that cause you to be weak. And also remember that iman fluctuates. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. So you find that your iman maybe has consistently become low and lower. So you need to increase the Quran in your life. You need to increase the Sunnah in your life. You need to increase your adhkar. Uh, and all of these things will help you. They are the the defense of the believer. And they are those things which will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strengthen your iman. Likewise, doing good acts, doing acts of charity, helping and assisting people, uh, just smiling at people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your affairs easy and come closer to you. So seek to draw near to Allah and He will come to you. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Meaning He will assist you. He will aid you. Uh, and He will support you. Tabarak wa ta'ala. But that requires sacrifice and being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make kathra to istighfar. Make tawbah ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remove yourself from those sins. And also... A last point of advice I want to mention is absolutely do not give up the path of ilm. Seeking knowledge wherever you are now and seeking knowledge if you have the opportunity to go abroad, go and study at the feet of the scholars, even with your sin. And this question we asked Sheikh Abdullah, hopefully one day I'll have a chance to go back and find it in my old recordings. Sheikh Abdullah Mar'i, Hafidullah Ta'ala in Shehr, when we're in Hadramaut. And I asked him about, someone sent a question about pornography. They said they were addicted to pornography, mm-hmm. and they, but they wanted to come to Yemen and study. Should they, you know, wait till they leave the pornography? And the sheikh said, no, they should, you know, of course, leave that pornography and get away from environments that entice them uh, mm-hmm. and those sins which are a means to looking at those things, but that they should still come and seek the knowledge because the knowledge is what's going to help you. It becomes a cycle. And I know for myself with my own shortcomings that being, especially my time in Medina, sitting with the ulama when I felt weak, when I was weak, when thing, the shaitan was whispering to me and different things were happening in my life and I was doing wrong, going with any one of the scholars and sitting in their durus, sitting in the front rows, sitting near the ulama and just watching them, listening and being engaged in what they're discussing, bringing my books, opening the books, reading, listening, understanding and benefiting. It helped me to, you know, that increased my iman and that's what kept me on the path because there's nothing that I found really in this life that I can say is really as uh, fulfilling as sitting with the ulama, you know, and, and, and especially probably when you are younger and you are a bit more vigilant, you know, when you're in the beginning of your seeking knowledge and stuff like that, you really have a different, uh, zeal and a different love for those sittings. Now, I take that for granted. I don't really go sit in Duros. I just do, I'm, my life is so busy with so, so many other things and teaching. So, uh, but when occasionally I do get a chance to sit in a halakat al-ilm, you know, it's, it's so, uh, it's, it's, a, it's such an important reminder, but it's definitely not like 
in the days. So what I would say to you is those things, the seeking of the knowledge, especially with Ahl Khair, because then you're in that gathering. When you sit in Durus with Mashaykh on a regular basis, especially Mashaykh that are teaching a lot, not just even one day a week. Certain Mashaykh, I was there, you know, we were together four days a week they're we're probably together more than both of us were with our families you know the sheikh has given us those durus so it's like your kind of family unit so that means you have a type of husn suhba you have a kind of righteous companionship so that alone is so fulfilling and it helps to increase your iman and those brothers and sisters that are out seeking knowledge in their various places i know the brothers in medina some of the youth that i i do know that are there right now they know exactly what I'm talking about. So that beautiful, lovely, delicious feeling, they're probably right in a dars as we speak or finishing up with Imam Abdul Masan al-Abad and others. And so this is such an exciting time and it is so fulfilling and it helps you combat your sins. So rush to go seeking knowledge. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Muhammad.